Okay. Again, thanks for coming, and we can get started. Uh, we have to run the typical disclaimer for all presentations about the stock market. It basically says that we are not brokers or certified financial planners. All the results here are illustrations based on simulated historical results. Past performance on this or any trading system is not indicative of future performance. The information here is solely our opinion and intended to stimulate your own exploration. Today's agenda, we're going to talk about the new stock market patterns and a new trading system to match it. Those of you who stayed to the end, uh, go ahead and get a free copy of the book. Read this first before you buy stocks. It's a Kindle book, but I'm also you can get it on the download for free from the site. It's the book that uh, I wrote, which really has all the research behind the trading system we're going to be talking about today. We're also going to cover one quick tip that anyone can use on any system. And that's the number, what I call the number one trading trap. So I think you'll get something definitely that you can use. Uh, throughout the course of this webinar. Um, we'll be talking about the green light trading system that has very high accuracy. Um, by design, we're into preserving capital. It has a decent sized winning trades, modest gains per trade, but really uh, we're getting double digit gains and quick returns two days year to date into 2015. A little bit about me. My name is Roy Swanson. I'm the founder of Steady Trader. In trading about 20 years, um, I was actually uh, requested by uh, DLJ, one of the early online brokers, to work on their derivatives. But uh, at the time, derivatives are very new, and uh, I didn't see the future in it. Bad call, but I did go on to consult many trading system providers. My partner and I have about 25 years' experience with probably a couple dozen trading systems providers. So we know the strengths and weaknesses of a lot of systems that we know why traders, why uh, well-intentioned traders have trouble even with big systems, and we'll talk a little bit about that when we talk about the number one trading trap. So first, I uh, just want to clear out the weeds. I hope we don't have any leprechaun traders here, what I call leprechaun traders. Um, you know, there's so much hype in this business. Uh, we're the anti-hype guys at Steady Trader. All the hype, simple rules, simple arithmetic, free tools, you get huge trades, you know, there's no work five minutes a day, set it and forget it, and everybody just, you know, turns on their money machine, there's no effort to learn. Well, and I've never seen that. We're going to talk about a professional approach here today, um, and that's why the pros do get paid, you know, seven figures. Um, we're talking about using guidelines, developing judgments, using tools that implement higher mathematics, not that we need to use. Tools should use higher math. Um, professional tools do this. They don't just use, you know, simple moving averages. Uh, if, if anybody could program into Excel. Um, we're talking about realistic gains per trade. You know, we're not dreaming here. We're talking about spending an hour a day trading to make some real money. And we're talking about monitoring your accounts again on a daily basis, um, especially in these markets. And if you're interested in this kind of trading, you're going to like this presentation. It's also, uh, we talk about something that you can master. You know, it's, it's not as if there's no effort to learn trading. You know, this, this is such a come on. We're so tired of that. Um, we'll be talking about a system that you can actually master like anything worthwhile in life. The more time you put into it, the better you'll get at it. So why are we here? Well, we're here, I think, because you're here, because the market has changed. And I love talking about this. The longer the year goes on, the more it changes. Um, you know, we saw a new pattern lock in really back in November where the market became incredibly range bound. And then, of course, we had our little correction in August. And the market is now back to its old pattern being kind of range bound, it looks like, just at a newer price point. Um, but the key to this change, uh, we really have to go back and look a little bit back in history at what we call the old market which is from the Great Depression to uh, about 88, 1988, just about when, just before I got started trading. This was the market of fundamentals, buy and hold, buy good stocks, they'll take care of you, that kind of thing. Something happened, I think we all know, if you've ever looked at a chart, uh, if you weren't trading then, but from in the 90s, uh, the change happened. I call it the market of dreams. That is when I got involved and a lot of people got involved. You really didn't have to work hard to make money in the market. It just went up like a rocket. 
But after the change, well, we had the new market. And the new market looks like this. The new market has had huge cycles of booms and busts and lots of volatility in the middle. This is a straight line curve all down the line for what, close to 100 years. There's no log scales here. The new market is just not like the old market. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. Something has changed. And what has changed is that we have short, strong cycles. Um, they are short because the big buyers, the institutional buyers, are all on very tight deadlines to turn in their profits. So the profits are short, the short-term profits take increase, short cycles, that's not going away. And they're all on the same page, you know, with the modernization and the computerization of trading, they're basically all the big players and the big buyers are on the same page, they have the same computers and algorithms, more or less, you know, within a few points, and they pretty much do the same thing. So the cycles are short and they're strong because we've got everybody playing with the same rules, at least in terms of the volume buyers. So this is not going away, these short storm cycles. The first thing that we advise in terms of trading in this market is to set your shutter speed. We know that long-term buy and hold is dead. That was the last century. Uh, and for the past 15 years, long-term trading, 2% uh, return per year from according to Black term, BlackRock. They did a report about a year ago. Short-term swing trading is OK. Day or intraday trading is OK. High frequency trading, a lot of buzz about it, a lot of articles about it, but you and I can't do it unless you have a supercomputer in your closet and a trunk line to the internet, which I don't think any of us do. We just, you know, we can read about it, but it's not what we can do. We've got this middle ground of short term and day or intraday trading that we can work with. Now we want to look at this concept of shutter speed. We're going to pick the worst example we could possibly find, and that was October 2008 to March 2009. Um, long term traders were killed. Uh, they just watched the, their portfolios you know, almost disappear, and uh, the crash was real. But here, we're talking about shutter speed. Um, like with a camera, when you tighten your shutter speed, things get in better focus. If you were involved weekly in that same market, that same period, there were five weeks up out of 20. It's not so bad. You can see there were times to recoup losses. There were times to get in and get out and actually make money. The crash, crash was tough for midterm traders, but not impossible. Now, here's where it gets really, really interesting. If you were a daily trader, if you're in there engaged every day during that same period, 41 of those 105 trading days, the worst trading days of our lifetimes, 40% were up. That's pretty close to even money. It's not quite, but you know, it's nowhere near a disaster because look at all those green bars. There were plenty of days when just riding an index fund, you could make back money and not lose your portfolio. The point is, is that the trader who's involved daily always has opportunities to make money. Um, this is the new market, and we have the same thing going on here. Look at how the market is changing its bias every couple of days. The green bars, the red bars here at the bottom. The market, four days max, we had the one correction, okay, so that might have been seven days. But the bias is changing from positive to negative every couple of days. This is what I meant about that short-term profit taking by the institutional buyers before. As soon as the market goes up, they take the profit. As soon as the market goes down, they're scooping up bargains. They are creating this cycle, uh, the big buyers and their computers, and it's a pretty tight control, and, and we saw it all year. The market was range bound within about you know 1% up, 1% down, um, and they're just playing the game and playing individual traders for fools because they knew what was going on. They're just taking their profits every couple of days or every day. So our first rule is to set your shutter speed to daily if you really want to make uh, money trading. And that's why we call our site Steady Trader. And that's what we call the result, you know, the rewards of steady trading. It's like anything else in life. If you want to play the violin, practice every day. You want to trade stocks, get in there every day. We're not saying make a trade every day. But we're saying get in there and take a look. Now, there's an issue with technicals on this old market, um, and we like to cover this very quickly. But technicals, if you remember the chart earlier about the old market, the new market, the new market, you know, the market that emerged after the 1990s, all the technicals that are out there in all the financial press and all the articles, you know, thousand articles a day on them, they trade the old market. Candlesticks were from 18th century rice traders. 
The Elliott Wave sounds really modern, but you know, Elliott published that in the Great Depression in the 30s. He used data from the Civil War to the Great Depression. It's really old, uh, old data, old research. RSI, a little bit more modern, published in 1978, though. It's still old market, and even Bollinger Bands, 1980s, it's all old market stuff. So the most popular technicals that, that, that the vast majority of traders are using, they were based on that old market of riding the fundamentals and riding the stocks. And that's why people have trouble with them. We feel you need new rules for the new market. We've talked about the first one, the very short time horizon, the daily time horizon. And if you're in there every day, it really is necessary to have a discipline of just a few good signals because if you're looking at a lot of signals every day, you're just going to get brain fog. It's too, it's just less is more. A big thing with us is rules with adjustments. Remember that chart about three slides back? The market is changing its bias every two or three days. So are your trading strategy rules changing every two or th three days? You know, everything is, is affected by the overall drift of the market. So if you're not changing your rules with the drift of the market, uh, again, we think that's, that's not a good idea. So we believe in the rules with daily adjustments and current performance as validation. We really do not have a lot of patience for strategies that show five, 10 years worth of data because the market of five or 10 years ago is nothing like the market of today. And the, even the market of two years ago, you know, all the advances, the dark pools, the front running, the high frequency trading, all of these advances, these tech tech driven advances are changing the market very quickly, almost, you know, every I'd say every quarter or so, you know, every three months, the market is really fundamentally changing in terms of the dynamics, the fundamental piping of the market. So we believe in current performance. Is your strategy working the last few weeks, last three months? Good. I don't really care if it worked, you know, last summer, frankly. Our motto is adapt daily. Um, so this is what we did. When we, after we ran all this research, um, we developed a green, we call the green light trading strategy uh, to trade through what we call the never ending cycles of profit taking pullbacks. And again, it's about short, quick price moves. Two day average hold, it's a small gain. We're not expecting to get a big gain on a small hold, but we'll show you how that ends up in a minute. Um, this is how the the portfolio has performed over the summer, last three months. Uh, I just want to highlight a few things here. Percent exposure is not all that high, and it, it's been getting lower as the market has become more and more tricky. Um, does about six, 70, 50 to 70 signals, but it's signaled less, and it's during the correction. Guess what? Didn't signal for almost a week after the correction, but leading up to the correction, made some big money. Um, the win rate is pretty consistent. So for the year, it's 84%. For the summer, as the market really got soft, it's been in the 70s, but still very good. Look at the gain per trade. The gain per trade has actually been getting better, and that's what we mean by a self-adjusting system. Greenlight adapts the rules to the market, and as the market really got tightened up and then correcting the summer, it was able to actually increase the average gain and in August made some really big trades on the downside of the volatility. Volatility is our friend. I don't care which way it goes. If it went down 10%, that's fine. Volatility, if you, your strategy should be able to capitalize on that, and we certainly did a green light in August. Um, the net ROI went up in August. Again, normally we get four, five, six percent a month. Shout out to 12%. Normally we get 6.6 .6 this year. And of course, this is the S&P. There's no comparison. The S&P is a complete loser this year, as we all know. So how do we do it? Well, we start with RMO. We talked about technicals before. RMO is a new technical. RMO is a new market technical. It was published in 2006, not too many years ago, definitely in the age of computers and fast trading. Um, basic RMO, though, is like a lot of indicators. I guess I would use the word sloppy because it's kind of slow. You get a buying signal here. They're kind of small. You don't have to figure me. But, and then the stock sort of drifts up, and that's great. But we were looking for something tighter. Here's a signal, and it, it sort of meanders up. Uh, here's a signal again. It goes flattened up and flattened up. But it's a pretty accurate signal overall. It just doesn't move quickly enough. We developed a way to tighten it up. 
Um, we use RMO in a completely new way. Basically, these are what our trays look like. Um, it's we have a, a rule: five days a nap maximum, but most trays are really now two day. Two days is the average. You get the buy signal, target entry day one. You can see on this one, seven percent. Day four, it's fourteen percent. Flat going in, flat going out. We've tightened up bar mode to target quick moves that basically take place in one to five days with an average of a two-day hold. This was AFAM from 227, but it's a classic green light trade move that the signals identify. It also does well on, on quick moves on stocks that you would never think would have a quick move, like GE. I mean, GE is a stock that uh, people don't really actively trade. They're just trying to get the dividend. But um, GE, we call it a 10% move on one day of the trade in, the, in April. Um, looking at August, uh, as I said before, we're really only interested if a, if a strategy is working recently. Um, here we go, target entry, the signal, target entry the next day, day two, we had a nice 7% gain, just two day trade. Again, look, flat to down going in, the trade, the this trend does not last. Green light gets you into the middle of the trend, typically. You don't get into the beginning. It's a safe system. We make the, make sure the trend is established. Then you get the signal, and then take take a ride up. Uh, again, looking for a realistic gain. This one was 7%. Nice little gain. Um, talked about some of the trades uh, we had in, in August during the correction. Um, green light does a very simple thing. It scouts out and signals the bear leveraged ETFs. Inverse funds is the more technical name, but these are the leveraged ETFs that go, price goes up when the market goes down. So there's no complicated, there's no hedge pairs, there's no you know, shorting margin calls. It's just go in, find the leveraged ETFs, um, green light signals them. Um, we had some tremendous trades in August, and that's how why we had those great results. Here was a signal. Uh, I think this was on the 19th, um, four days, 37% on FXP. This was a, a, was a China bear, ProShares China. So these are two and three X leveraged ETFs. Um, we had just, I think, really five of these when the correction started. If you remember the correction started, a lot of people were just, you know, sitting on their portfolio wondering what to do. Green light was triggering FXP, 37% in three days. This Dow, that's the Dow inverse, 43% three days. Another short on the Dow, on the S&P, I think. Uh, oh, that's the 12% in three days. This is, and this is a short on the Russell, the mid caps, 30% in two days. In any event, this is what Greenlight does when the market goes down. And in those three or four intense days when we had the correction, Greenlight was making money. Uh, <laughs> best all year, actually, this was best run, best VA run we've had all year. So we do not fear corrections at Greenlight because the system is built to actually take advantage of them. A fast correction, as I said earlier, volatility is your friend. I don't care if it's up or down, as long as your system can signal it. How we do it, we make daily adjustments, as I said earlier. The market's changing every day. The first part of the scan is to measure and rate the daily conditions. We select the lists that we scan based on step one. We adjust our entries too. We adjust our target entries based on the daily market conditions from step one. So we make two daily adjustments, the lists that we scan and the entries that we uh, plug onto the signals. We use current performance as a reality check. After we scan for the signals, we measure and rate each signals. We look at the signals. What have they done in the last three months? saying we don't go back much more than three months. Has this signal worked for the, in the last three months? If you've ever done this exercise, you'll know not all signals were created equal. I mean, there are great signals out there, but on different stocks and different ETFs, they just don't seem to work ever. You got to, we have a four step method, just a couple quick questions of looking at the last three months to make sure that this signal has actually worked in the last few weeks. So we look at the recent, recent trend staying three month accuracy and we double check for false signals. We only do a good few good signals. We start with 10 or 12 from the basic scan. We knock it down to six after the performance evaluation. And then we knock it down to three or four if we find the false signals. 
So it's all about winnowing out the signals to only find the best three or four on any given day. And uh, in the summer market, very often it was only one, two, or three signals, never more than four signals. As I said earlier, if you're in the market every day, it's very important to be disciplined, avoid brain fog, avoid getting overwhelmed, and just look at a couple signals, make sure they're good so you can trade them without really thinking, overthinking it. Now, how do these small trades add up? Well, you've probably heard this before. Money management is the key to successful trading, and it really is. Like money management is your goals. It's how you trade. It's how you control the risk. It's your sales plan. And if you're, you know, trading is your business, it's your sales plan. We use something called the Quick Cycle Portfolio, which we teach with the with the strategy. Basically, going in into the out of the market, I told you the average hold is two days. Um, this slide's a little old. Early in the year, back in uh, February, we were doing a two and a half day hold. But basically, the idea is put some money in Monday. It's on average, it's out by Wednesday with maybe a three percent gain. Put some money in the Tuesday. It's out by Thursday with a three percent gain. Same thing. Rinse and repeat. You see what happens in this kind of scenario is that you're cycling through your money very quickly. You're putting it in, taking it out, putting it in, taking it out. Remember, the market is changing its bias every couple of days. So this is a good thing to do. Get the money in, but take it out before the market changes its mind. Monday, you might be going in with, with some, uh, the signals might be on some growing stocks. Wednesday, the signals might be on some bear leveraged ETFs. Um, there'll be different kinds of trades depending on the market lead that you might see. So again, in and out, in and out before the market changes its mind. The benefits of a quick cycle portfolio is that it allows modest and realistic gains Add up, add up. Here's an example. Uh, it assumes $2,000 buy orders, a $12,000 trading account. Let's say we have four signals a day, as we've been talking about. Three of them execute, which, which puts 6000 in every day. If you have two win and one lose, and we're doing a much better accuracy rate than that, but let's say you have two out of three win. 3% 3 gain on the winners would be $50 times two, netting out the $10 discount commission, using a stop loss, which we definitely teach to keep keep losses at 1% each. Basically, you get two winners at $50 each, 100 minus 30 to $70 a day. doesn't sound like a lot, but per week and then per year, it adds up. So $17,500 a year trading every day like this with these small trades is 140% annual return on a very modest account. There's nothing outrageous in this method. There's nothing extraordinary. Again, we're not talking about an amazing accuracy rate with this example. Two out of three, two out of three, 66% accuracy rate. We're not talking about huge gains per trade, three percent. This is all just sort of yeoman trading, getting out there, doing your job. This is what it looks like though when you add it up. The green light SP portfolio. And we've discounted these, the simulated portfolio, we discounted at 25% to make up for slippage, because not everyone gets in and out at the, at the optimal time, and also for commissions. So we took 25% off the actual moves to make this graph. Still, an amazing performance compared to the S&P, or the Dow is kind of a mirror of that this year. And again, this is understated by 25% to, to account for slippage. This is what a tracking portfolio would look like, starting with a $25,000 account, at the beginning of the year, it's up 63% at the end of August. And the, these are the actual average gains. These are the, this is what the system, the line is what it's throwing off, the cumulative gains. It's throwing off $15,000. And this is the cumulative value of the portfolio. So $15,000 against 25,000, 63% by the end of August. It just adds up by trading small trades every day. This is why we like to say in the office, this is why Derek Jeter was the captain of the Yankees for 20 years or whatever it was, because he always got on base. He didn't get home runs a lot, but he always got on base. You go out and trade every day and you get on base, you win the ball game. This is a base hit strategy that anyone can succeed with because everybody can make base hits. Now we want to talk a little bit about the that number one trading strategy trap that I promised at the beginning. So here's the thing. I assume everyone here is, is, likes to use research and data to trade. And when you think about it, 
All research-based and database trading strategies are based on sample trading data. Now, the trap is, is that people generally like to see a big sample. You know, I'd rather see uh, 4,000 trades than 100 trades, and I don't want to see one year. I want to see 10 years of data. I mean, this is human nature. But as I said earlier, we really don't care about what a, what a system did 10 years ago or what it did, you know, between 2005 and 2010. But, but academic researchers and a lot of other systems tout huge volumes, huge sample sizes. I could... Academic researchers, like uh, if you're using Bollinger Bands or something, they use, usually use decades of data. But the trap is, is that you can't really cherry pick. If you don't trade all the signals, you don't have any ex reason to expect to match the published results. So let me say this again. If you have a system that trades that signals a lot, let's say it, it knocks out whatever, 15 signals a day, if you don't trade them all, you have no reason to expect you're going to match the published results on that system. Let's take an example. You have a system signals 20 signals every time you run it. And of course, they won't all execute. So 14 might execute and 11 might win and 3 lose. Let's say it has a really good accuracy rate. Well, who's going to actually put in 20 orders and you know, even, even 14 of them? And the thing is, is where are your orders going to go? What people do is they cherry pick. So what if you get the six that don't execute? Well, this wasted your time. If you get the 11 that win, lucky you. But who's to say you're going to pick the 11 that win? You might pick the three that lose. When you cherry pick, you are self-selecting the different segments that exist within a system that, that uses a lot of data and signals a lot. So if you don't trade all the signals, you have no reason to expect to match the published results. Most systems produce far too many signals for the individual trader. People think, oh, this is great. I'm getting a lot of choice. A lot of choice is a bad thing. What you really need to do, because cherry picking destroys the uh, validity of the data, you might need a trading account of fifty or $100,000 to trade a lot of these systems. Um, so they're basically useless to the most individual traders unless they have huge trading results, trading accounts. And remember, the results always cluster. So when you cherry pick and select your few, you're probably going to cluster into one of the segments of the data, and it might not be a good one. This is why Greenlight only signals three or four signals a day. It should be higher than that. Um, if you use a $25,000 trading account, there's only $6,000 exposed on a daily basis. And the quick cycle trading cycles the money over and over again. Every couple of days, it's in, it's out, it's in, it's out. And that's what makes it add up. Um, I think we've talked about this. The minimum account size is about $25,000. Can you trade with options? I think it can, but we're not options traders. But these are quick moves, so there's probably a play there for options. Can you work a regular day and job and do this? It takes about 20 minutes at night and then probably another 30 minutes during the day to monitor the portfolio at different times, you know, mid-morning, lunch, whatever, close. Um, so certainly most people with a regular day job can do this. How much subjectivity? There is judgment required. Part of the exercise of green light trades is looking at the signals and figuring out which ones work and which ones don't. When you think about it, this is how pros work. The guy who actually makes the decision, the money manager or the trader, he gets a report from the quant. The quant just doesn't run the numbers, run the data, and go make the buys. You know, there's that middleman, the guy with the power of the purse, the buyer. He reads the data, he evaluates it, and makes a judgment call. That's the role you're in with study picking green light trading system. You're going to run the signals, and then you're going to evaluate them. We teach you how to evaluate them. We give hard questions, yes, no answers. Just a few of them, but there is an element of good judgment that is necessary like anything in life. So what you get with the system is you get full instructions, you get the video, you get manuals, how to run the scans, how to validate the signals and make your judgment calls. Placing the order, we covered that a little bit, but we can get instructions on how to place the orders to manage a quick cycle portfolio. It's all there, you know, printed, log in, download the manuals. You get an Excel spreadsheet shows you how to run the quick cycle portfolio 
on a daily basis, how the money goes in and out. You get one month free of Metastock. We use Metastock to run the scans. Uh, Metastock has very good RMO scans. They have very good data. They've been out uh, there for about uh, 25 years. We think they're one of the best uh, scanning tools out there, and uh, they like what we're doing, so they're giving our customers one free month of Metastock. You could use your own system if you want. You'd have to uh, copy the formulas out of Metastock and, and uh, plug it into whatever you're using, trade spreadsheet. Whatever. Um, we give you a trades worksheet um, to actually calculate the entry pads and rate the signals, put them in, then it calculates your target entries, plug in your results as you get as you get them. That comes with it. It's in just an Excel spreadsheet. We have a format for uh, Yahoo tracking portfolio. Uh, we believe in making tracking portfolios every day for this. You're making a new portfolio every day. You plug it into Yahoo. We show you how to do it so you can keep an eye on the um, your positions during the day. What really makes the system work, uh, I, I talked about this way in the beginning, it's about mastery. Um, we give you tools to validate your un understanding, and there's two of them. First is free access to our scan room. We actually uh, videotape ourselves running the scans in our offices, not every day, but at least three days a week. So you can basically run the scans yourself, with the tools we give you, you know, following the instructions, and then go watch the scan room video and see if your results match ours. And by watching the video, you watch us run the scans and make the decisions and you see, you know, where you're deviating from what we're teaching. You know, there's always that question when people learn a system. Am I doing it the way they want me to do it? Am I am I implementing the system the way the teacher intends? Well, that's what the scan room videos do. You watch over our shoulders as we do it, and uh, they're just unlimited. You can go in and watch as much as you like. I'd say within a, a week or two, you will be mirroring our results totally. Um, beyond that, you also get free access to the green light trades, which are just the signals, just the output of the scan room. Um, so you can, so as you get along, or if you do well right off the bat, you can just go and click, look at the signals after you run your scans. And if your signals are the same as our signals, well, obviously you've got it. Um, so the signals are free for a month. The scan rooms are free uh, into perpetuity. Um, both of these are ways to validate again. After you run your scans, look at what we get in our offices and make sure that you are mastering and using the system as it is intended. Um, it's all on our homepage. You get the manuals and all the tools in this middle box here. The scan room videos, click on anyone, watch them, get your daily signals. It's, uh, it's really set up, you know, log in. There it is. It's all right there for you. Um, system costs $289. It's regularly $350, but we're running a special. We put the webinar today. You get the entire system includes full instructions with manuals and videos, scan room access, a month of free daily signals, and a month of Metastock and a day free as well. Um, it's a five-day risk-free examination when you take it. So to order it, just go to steadytrader.com. Um, Make this real easy. If you want to get a copy of the book that started it all, read this first before you buy stock. That's available on steadytrader.com. Just click on the, uh, the icon for the book. Um, let me go over here and look at the uh, chat. I don't have any questions yet, but if you have questions, now is the time. Hold this open for a couple more minutes. I'm going to turn off the recording.